Hi guys, this is Steve with Classic Cars Driven by Data. And we've got a good episode for you this week. We're going to be looking at the FAST, that's the name of the manufacturer, FAST Oxygen Sensor and its data logging. So what we're going to be doing is uh, putting this oxygen sensor in the exhaust of this uh, MGA and we'll be recording its air fuel ratio uh, under a range of different driving conditions. Uh, really just as an example, in a later episode we're going to use the oxygen sensor to tune the uh, twin carbs, the twin SU carbs, and to really get the most out of this, uh, out of this vehicle. So this is, the, uh, this is the kit, this is the fast fuel air uh, ratio meter. I would stress that this is for gasoline or petrol engined uh, vehicles, not for diesel. Uh, at this point in time, it has an oxygen sensor. Um, it has a display and control unit that you see in the box, in the case, and it comes with 12 feet of cable. This can be bought with two oxygen sensors if you happen to have a V engine. And uh, so it's an extremely flexible, versatile piece of kit. And by the way, it costs a few hundred dollars, not a few thousand dollars, just a few hundred dollars. To my mind, it's really excellent value and I've been very pleased with it so far. So how do we, um, what's the easiest way to access the exhaust system with the oxygen sensor? Well, I have chosen to use this little gizmo from Innovate. It's a little, um, little bracket and some plumbing that will go into the exhaust pipe at the rear of the vehicle and allow the oxygen sensor to sample the uh, prevailing exhaust gases as they exit the vehicle. So the exhaust gases enter this end, you can't see it, but, but this is tubular and there's an entrance here. So the exhaust gas comes in here, flows all the way to the end. Then it uh, fills this chamber, turns around, comes back along a, a different uh, chamber and then exits at this point here. The oxygen sensor is screwed into the top of the device and this uh, screw here is to clamp the device to the exhaust pipe. So this is small enough to go into the small exhaust of the MGA, which I'm remembering is certainly no more than about an inch and a half diameter. So you put this into the exhaust, you screw this down and you clamp it in place. And from my experience, this, is, uh, this has worked extremely well. So we'll see more of this in a minute. We'll see it with the oxygen sensor installed and we'll, uh, we'll give you an idea of how it works. Well, in fact, here it is. Here's the exhaust pipe and you can see uh, the threaded area where the oxygen sensor is going to be installed right here. You see the uh, clamping screw uh, tight against the exhaust pipe and the rest of the Innovate um, oxygen sensor adapter is installed inside the exhaust uh, tailpipe. This is uh, pretty much the whole deal. There's the, so this is all about the fast uh, air fuel ratio meter. This is the, uh, this is the display and the controls. So you can do some different, sim relatively simple controls here. You can also do some crude data logging at this point. And better yet, you can actually export the data from, uh, from this box to a data logging system. And from there, of course, you could take it anywhere you want to into Excel or any other analytical program. So here's the Innovate bracket that goes in the exhaust. There's the oxygen sensor attached to the bracket. Here's the lead. That lead then uh, fits into this cable here, into this connector here, and then you've got 12 feet of cable, which uh, for my application was actually uh, plenty to get us started. The power supply for this unit uh, is actually 12 volts, and you'll see here a cigarette lighter adapter. Uh, unfortunately, the MGA does not come with <laughs> a cigarette lighter. Uh, arrangement. So I, um, I jerry-rigged this and managed to get 12 volts direct from the battery into this device here 
to power the uh, the device. So so anyway, this is this is what you get uh, in the kit minus this. Of course, this was purchased separately. And the alternative, of course, is to just put a, a plug in the exhaust system somewhere, have it welded, and then screw this directly into the exhaust system at a point of your choosing. I didn't want to do that. I preferred just to use the tailpipe. So that's what we did. Here's a close up of the oxygen sensor. It's an electrochemical device, um, pretty sophisticated stuff. It's been around for 30 years, uh, has been used in gasoline engine control to maintain stoichiometric or thereabouts conditions for three way catalytic converters as a way to control NOx hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide. But anyway, here it is, it's being used to tune a classic car and I'm excited to uh, to have it. Here it is installed uh, just as we talked about. Now it's been screwed into the adapter and the bracket that holds it to the tailpipe. So in order to get the data out of the um, fast display unit, uh, it's necessary to use a data logger. So this is a data logger from Daytac. Again, not super expensive. I think it was over $100, but less than $200. Um, it can be powered by USB. And in fact, that's exactly what I've done. So this USB plugs into the laptop computer that I use to display the data. And that's sufficient. The USB is sufficient to power the unit. Um, these are analog channels along here. So if you're measuring something in uh, uh, analog terms in a, as a voltage, 0 to 5 volts, for example, then you, you put the ground and the signal in these screws here, under these screws here. And basically this device will read them at a frequency that you can control. And then you can uh, uh, transport the data back to the laptop. So anyway, this is a pretty, uh, pretty useful piece of kit, not expensive and absolutely perfect for the task of data logging the um, fast oxygen sensor air fuel ratio meter. Now, the other thing that I use is uh, my phone, right? I have an iPhone. Uh, this is an app for the iPhone. It's called sensor log. I thoroughly recommend it. It's uh, quite powerful. And I think depending on what it is you want to do and the resolution, the frequency of sampling, etc., for most purposes, this will this will do a good job. It'll give you uh, GPS coordinates as you drive your vehicle. It'll give you acceleration, although I am tending not to use this. It's rather difficult. It's got acceleration in X, Y and Z axes. It's pretty sensitive and, um, you know, you're going to need to secure your phone to the body of the car in such a way that it really only responds to the acceleration of the bulk mass of the car. So not an easy thing to do if you holding it in the, in the vehicle or you've got it in a, uh, a phone holder. Probably not going to work too well because you get an awful lot of noise on the signal as the uh, as the phone vibrates. But what it does do quite well is give you velocity or uh, vehicle speed. So that's basically how I use it is to log the vehicle speed and I guess also the GPS coordinates. Anyway, great device. The data can be exported as a CSV, comma separated variables and or values. And it can be imported quite easily into Excel and then combined with the uh, air fuel ratio data. So anyway, that's cheap and cheerful, as they say in the UK. It's just my iPhone with an app and it reads um, all of the sensors that are in the phone. Actually, I've, I've really only talked about acceleration, GPS and speed, but uh, it can do some other things as well. So this is the setup that I use to collect the data that I'm going to show you shortly. So here's the data acquisition box connected to uh, the laptop that controls everything, well, it controls, it controls this device anyway. It's connected by USB and that acts as a power supply. 
So it came from uh, DATAC Instruments. It's the DI2108 eight channel high speed USB data acquisition system. And again, excellent value. And I've been uh, really very pleased with it. The uh, fast air-fuel ratio meter provides analog output. There are two little cables that are tucked away that can be accessed. So uh, I exposed those and then I connected them indirectly to two of the uh, inputs on the data acquisition system. So really, I was only running with one channel. I guess I could have put other channels in there if I was measuring other things. You can see it's got a lot of capacity. But for what I was doing here and now, that was fine. As I said earlier, I jerry-rigged the 12 volt supply, which uh, came with a cigarette, male cigarette um, adapter. But also here's the uh, NOx sensor. And you can see the connector here that goes straight into the uh, fast air display and control unit via 12 feet of cable. I purchased the uh, air fuel ratio meter from Summit Racing, really an excellent resource. Uh, it's a fast air fuel ratio meter and the part number is 170401. Now, most importantly, uh, you'll need to download Windac software, which is readily available. Um, I don't believe I paid anything for it. I think it, uh, it basically is supplied by these folks here, Datac. And uh, it allows you to talk to the data acquisition system to set parameters such as sample frequency um, and start and stop of recording, etc., etc. So very simple setup, just one channel being logged, but it works great and I highly recommend it to you. So this is the setup on the vehicle. You can see the you see the oxygen sensor here in the tailpipe. Here's the short lead from the oxygen sensor. There's a connector behind here. And this is the 12 foot cable that connects to, um, to the display unit and the control unit for the fast air fuel ratio meter. This is the um, untidy state of the cabin while I was collecting data. So the data acquisition system is controlled by laptop. You can actually see a little bit of data here. Uh, there's the uh, air fuel ratio meter display and control unit, and there's the data acquisition system. I think you just about see a USB coming in here. And there you have it. That's, uh, that was the setup, pretty easy. Um, not the tidiest but basically very effective and I was very happy with it. And of course, I've got a holder here for the iPhone, uh, plus I can provide power to the iPhone via this USB. And that lets me log vehicle speed versus time, which can then be synchronized with this data over here, the air fuel ratio data. So let's uh, just look at some sample data before we finish here. This, um, this is data that was collected by the uh, sensor log application on my iPhone. Um, yeah, it's collected at one hertz. That's all that the phone's capable of. I, um, at this point, have not purchased a V-Box, which can collect data at much higher frequencies. But, you know, this is adequate. Here we're talking about um, zero to 60 times pretty slow i'm hoping that when i actually tune the carbs and um, you know improve the mixture control that i can actually get more performance and uh, reduce that 0 to 60 time some of these bumps here are genuinely gear shifts so you see the speed coming up and then uh, falling away uh, it's only got five gears, so not all of these uh, ripples are gear shifts, but uh, but there's some gear shifting going on there. Anyway, there's a note to 60. What I want to show you now is the corresponding air fuel ratio as measured by the fast O2 oxygen air fuel ratio meter. And you can see that, um, maybe not surprisingly, the air fuel ratio is running pretty darn rich. Um, I, my preference would be for it to be 
closer to 14, I guess, uh, most of the time. But you can see I've got a deficit to what I would prefer down in the 12s initially. So that's a deficit of two air fuel ratios. And then later on, we're actually spending time in the, what, 10 and a half to 13 as I mash the throttle. And you can see the SU carb doesn't quite keep up. We get bursts of uh, leaner mixture, although not lean, but leaner. And uh, then it comes back down. So th this is really the dynamics of the, of the SU carb as much as anything. So uh, in a later episode, I'm going to be tuning these two SU carbs and seeing if we can improve not only the 0 to 60 time, but uh, improve the uh, mixture ratio here and move it up closer to, you know, I guess I'd be happy with 13 and a half to 15 as a tight range versus uh, this range here, which is pretty much 11 all the way up to some pretty lean spikes actually. So um, this is good data. I'm, I'm content that this is uh, an accurate representation of the car. I do know that the miles per gallon are pretty awful. I'm typically measuring 15 or 16 miles to the gallon. And this car is so light uh, that even with this uh, level of technology, the, the older 1950s engine, it should still do a little better than 15 or 16 miles to the gallon. So I'm, again, I'm hoping we'll improve performance and we'll improve miles per gallon. So here you see them together. It's the same data you've just been looking at. There's the uh, 0 to 60. And here are some of the peaks that you see uh, when I come off the throttle and then mash the throttle. Um, so this really, these actually are the gear shifts, I think. So this is first, second, third, fourth, and then finally into fifth. Um, so interesting behavior of the SU carb. And uh, we're going to be looking at that in later episodes in much more detail. So that concludes uh, this episode where we looked at the fast oxygen sensor being used as an air fuel ratio meter on this um, really cute 1958 MGA. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, hit the subscribe button and we'll be uh, seeing you in the next episode.